This is a series of films that tells the history of contemporary fashion photography as seen through the eyes of models. Tell me about Shalom Harlow, because when I first met you, I met you in Shalom. You did? Yeah, I think the first time I ever met you was this job. No. Wasn't it? No. Are you sure? Haven't we done all of our like rock and roll stories and suits and have. things? I remember thinking it's the first British time. Vogue? So we had to fly to Barbados or somewhere. Yeah, uh, Antigua, uh -huh. and a little tiny plane from Antigua to Barbuda. Uh -huh. And I remember sitting on a little plane thinking, I feel really sick. And I've got Amber in front of me and Shalom in front of me. And this is the first time I've ever worked with him and I'm going to throw up. <laughs> Just because this plane's doing this. So that's one memory I had of it. Uh, I remember you getting covered in mosquito bites. Um, yeah, there were a lot of mosquitoes. So you walked from the shoot back to the hotel mm -hmm. at about six o'clock in the evening. Not very which smart, Which was in yeah. mosquito time. Mm -hmm. um, but tell me a little bit about your relationship with Shalom, if you don't mind me prying. Because you um, were very much, sort of, uh, for a long time, you were you modeled together, you're often seen together. Mm -hmm. She was a friend, I guess. She was. She was my closest friend in the business. Yeah. And, um, you know, like my sister. Right. And we lived together when we first started. And um, we, you know, when we both kind of made it, made it big in the business was about the same time. And um, everyone kind of photographed us together because we were yeah. bosom buddies. Yeah. And I think because we were opposite but similar yeah yeah you know our looks were different but we complemented each other yeah and she was dark and I was you know a fake blonde uh, <laughs> but I have to say she's not really black haired either I've dyed her hair a few times um, but just putting it out there just putting it out there but I think we complemented each other in a lot of ways but yeah. um, and there was such a close friendship and um, you know sisterly love that I think people just wanted to kind of photograph it and yeah. and it's also nice to see two women together yeah. that look well together but also um, you can feel the companionship yeah and you know a lot of people thought we were lovers and right. we weren't right but um, I do love her <laughs> and she was yeah. so much fun to work with so I'm, sh I'm sure you she know. was. I know, absolutely. I worked with both of you. Um, but I, it, it's sort of strange because we look back at the, the sort of models that I'm talking to about this, about the history of fashion and photography. There aren't that many that come as pairs. No. And for a little while, you and Shalom were a kind yeah. of, you know, that you, for all the reasons that you say, that you were great synergy together, that you both physically complemented each other, that there was a sort of real playfulness between you, mm -hmm. which was engaging for a photographer. Um, but it's quite rare to, and it was quite a while you were friends with her. Quite yeah, I mean, we're, we were still friends, but I think, you know, I mean, it was hard every once in a while for us because, yeah. um, you know, when she'd go on a shoot, somebody would be like, how's Amber? Yeah. And vice versa, when I'd go on a shoot, somebody would yeah. say, how's, how's Shalom? Yeah. Um, but at the same time, we both decided, I mean, you know, we never spoke about it really, but we decided to, to work together, yeah. and we did a lot of great things together. But we also decided, actually, we did speak about it, uh, making sure that we had our separation mm. because we both wanted our careers. Yeah. We didn't want to be the, we called ourselves Shalamber. <laughs> we didn't always want to be Shalamber. We wanted no. to be, you know, Amber and Shalom or Shalom yeah. and Amber. We wanted to have yeah. our separate identities. Yeah. And so I think we were both pretty smart in, in doing that. There were things we said no to. Right, right. For sure. But, um, you know, we have some great iconic images together and yeah. and we had great adventures yeah I'm sure so how did you first meet her um, she was with my agency Ford at the time and um, I saw her like you know coming through the agency she was kind of like the agency pet and right she was like everybody loved her <laughs> and I was kind of you know sitting in the corner watching this, this very glamorous she'd already been in Paris for a while so she, right. she had the ropes down <laughs> and then um, apparently she needed a flat and a roommate and they tried to link us up and we met for dinner and it was like peas in a pod. Excellent. And what were model flats like in Paris at that time? Well, we got our own. Okay. We found a very cool apartment in the first, right yeah. by the Louvre. Right. And, um, you know, we had a cardboard box and a plastic crate and two Sounding mattresses. Glamorous. Sounding really glamorous. <laughs> the apartment was two actually... Two mattresses. The apartment was actually quite pretty, but, yeah. but um, we just didn't have money to furnish it. <laughs> Right. We well, got there. It actually doesn't really matter no, so much. we got there, I mean, a couple months. Yeah. And which are your favorite cities to be in? Um, 
If I said we had a job in Paris this week, how would you go? Ooh. No, I'd be happy. Right. I mean, I'm happy to go anywhere, really. Right. I love I love Paris, I love London, I love Rome. Um, and I where love were you sort of based? I love going home. Right, and where's home? <laughs> LA. Right. Um, and where's, um, when you were you know, working a lot with Shalom, where were you mostly? Were you mostly in Paris? Were you mostly yes. in New York? We lived in, we lived in Paris mostly. Right. And then she moved to New York, and I stayed in Paris. And, um, and then I moved to New York, and we worked together when we both were in New York as well. Right, right, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Her birthday is today. Is it? Yes. You're kidding me. No. Really? Well, happy send. birthday, Shalom. Yeah, happy birthday, Shalom. Yeah, I'll, just, I'll send a little note. I'm not quite sure I have, I'm sure I'll find a way. Um, how sweet. Well, anyway, sorry, that's, that's, and this is a shoot that we did together mm -hmm. uh, for British Vogue with Lucinda Chambers. That's right. Thomas McIver doing hair. Wow. And I think Linda Cantello doing makeup. I think. I could be wrong on that one. Maybe. I can't remember. I remember. I, I can't believe you can remember who did hair and makeup. It just came to me. Just, you know, <laughs> when you see an image and things come back to you. Mm -hmm. This was our big. Robin Derrick, who was the art director of British Vogue at the time. Mm -hmm. um, we'd done a whole thing. We brought back kind of the ring flash and that kind of harder right, glamour and that sort of thing. And then we wanted to do the flip side of that. So we thought, let's go back to soft focus. Let's do everything. We spent. I spent months testing out all these different films in like different climates and when we realized we were going to photograph it in Barbuda we, I remember going to, to the greenhouse in Kew Gardens which is kind of like a hot and humid uh -huh. and doing all my film tests in the greenhouse in Kew Gardens just to get the kind of temperatures right anyway um, and then we started doing ring flash yes well I it kind of yeah it, no it kind of kept going I sort of lighting that wouldn't go away because mm -hmm. it's so great and it's kind of brings things to life it and does it's a sense of drama and a sense of kind of. I'm never afraid when somebody brings it up. It's no, it's, it's, it's just usually, fun. It's, it's, it's usually a good light to see. Um, Copy. I remember using it in the sea actually once. That was dangerous. <laughs> Still, anyway. <laughs>